Liad, with the explosion of large language modules and the very human sounding of the various uh, AI programs, uh, the question of AI consciousness has now emerged as a, a question of, uh, of worry that they will destroy humanity or their moral rights if you turn off the computer, a whole series of questions which relate to AI uh, consciousness. Um, what can the science of consciousness that, that you've worked on and you've thought about for AI consciousness uh, contribute to the conversation? The question of AI consciousness is an excellent example for how the field of consciousness science could contribute to society at large. So now we have a huge question that lies uh, ahead of us, and we have to try and inform, uh, this, make an informed decision about the prospects of AI consciousness because we have to decide what to do um, in order to cope with these types of instances, if indeed they are conscious. And how would we know? So we've seen computer scientists, even the most well-respected ones, coming out with big claims about consciousness in AI. And these are, of course, very important, but I think that we, it would be better off for us as a society to also base our assessment of consciousness in AI on the knowledge we already acquired in the field of consciousness. And this is what we have been trying to do in a multidisciplinary group that was formed by uh, Patrick Batlin and Robert Long, two philosophers. And here they gather together neuroscientists, computer scientists, philosophers, trying to think about this problem from multiple angles. So it's not only the computer scientists and not only the, the philosophers and not only the consciousness scientists. And um, our assumption there was that um, in order to make an informed assessment of consciousness in AI, you have to accept computational functionalism as a working assumption. Now, this is a very important point because when I joined the group, I was kind of reluctant to make that commitment. And indeed, one of the things that we emphasize in the report that we published is that not all of us commit to computational functionalism. So I have, and just to maybe explain what computational functionalism is, this is the assumption that if you built a system that is computationally and functionally equivalent to a conscious system, that system would also be conscious. Now, to be honest, I don't know if this is indeed the case, but I do think that there is no other way for us to evaluate the question unless we assume this as a working uh, hypothesis or if you want to accept one of the theories of consciousness. So for example, if you accept the integrated information theory as the right or the mm -hmm. correct theory, then you already know the answer because they would claim that there is no consciousness for AI. But I'm not willing to make that commitment either. Like the field has not accepted one theory. So I don't think that we, when we come to assess the question, should adopt one or the other. So the idea is to say, okay, let's use computational functionalism and then ask, out of the theories of consciousness that we already have and that assume that consciousness goes with one function or another, how, how can we extract indicators or markers like clear functions that are ascribed to conscious processing? If we are able to do that, then we can go to a given AI system and test whether these indicators are there or not. Now, will it tell us for sure that this system, let's say that we found a system that has all the indicators from all the theories that we gathered. Will that assure us that this system is conscious? Some of the people in our group think that it will. That if you find a system that has all these indicators, we should say that it's conscious. I don't belong to that group within our, no. um, within our group because as I said, the only kind of, I only, I'm only willing to go up until saying that this system has higher chances of being conscious than a system that doesn't fulfill all these indicators. So computational functionalism is uh, a significant constraint on the whole approach. It's very valuable to what you've done because you've taken one theory of consciousness, which is a, a subset of a subset. It's under materialism, physicalism, and it's under computationalism. As you, 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 you have to have a, a lot of commitments to get to there. But if you do get to there, what are the kinds of questions you can ask and, and how confident can you be? So that's a very legitimate exercise, but you must appreciate the constraints that you have. For sure. Correct. And that's why I said at the beginning that the, the conclusions that we draw are all contingent upon yeah. the credence that we assign to computational functionalism okay. as a starting point. And that is an excellent um, 
prototype of how we should go about testing various theories of consciousness and to assess AI consciousness within each, each individual scope. Now, we should say that the classic way to assess consciousness is so-called Turing test, which says that if, if uh, a, a double-blind human uh, 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 judges would, would see the output of a system, and if they couldn't judge the difference between a human system and a, and a, uh, a, non, a, a non-biological system, then it would be conscious. But I think we've all learned that that that, that ship has sailed, <laughs> and, and that's no longer the case because AI can pass the Turing test very easily. In fact, we'll maybe win a lot of, uh, a lot of cases about which is more human, uh, but still be you know, clearly not conscious. But I think there is a very important distinction to be made here. So the way I see it, the Turing test tests for intelligence. It doesn't test for consciousness. And I think that considering, considering the Turing test as a test for consciousness conflates the two. I now, agree. you could see there are systems that are highly intelligent but don't have any conscious experience. And you could also think about some conscious creatures that are not very intelligent. Um, but it, it doesn't mean that they have to go together. So I grant you that AI systems can pass the Turing test. Some would say to a greater degree of success or to a lesser degree of success. But I think that that is actually orthogonal to the question of whether they can feel, whether yes. they can have conscious experiences, sure. qualitative states. Yeah. And that's what we are interested in. Wouldn't you commit to the statement that uh, if materialism, physicalism is 100% true without, without residue, that AI consciousness in principle uh, is, uh, is real? Um, that's a big uh, commitment to make. I think that... Why would you if not you, make that commitment? Okay, so if you are able to build a replica at all levels yes, of yes, organization yes, of that, my brain, that's, that's then, it, yes, then yes, then yeah, yes. But a, current, AI, current AI is far from, well, agree, from agree, being there. Agree. And I think that also a critical question is what is the grain of uh, replication? So. If you are able to build a, a system that has neuron-like units, and within the neurons there are cells, and within the cells there are micro structures, it takes, yeah. if it has, if it's a complete replica of all the levels of organizations, then yes, I would say that it should be conscious. Yes. So therefore, you, you can make that commitment. I, I would make that commitment if mm -hmm. I were, you know, total materialist. Yeah. I would say that in principle, it's possible. Whether it's in, whether it's practical, um, I, I think. You know what yeah. I call the techno optimist might say ten years to thirty years. Uh, you know I would say it's more like ten thousand years to thirty thousand years. <laughs> don't, don't hold me to that number. Yeah. But you know even if it is possible in principle that the technical complexities are far right. beyond even our conception today. But just to kind of name the maybe state the obvious, current AIs are not even remotely close to Correct. what you're describing. Right. They are operating at the software level rather than at the hardware level. Right. So once we built it, it wouldn't be an AI, it would be some kind of robot yeah. and has all the sensory organs as well the, and all the uh, organization levels of the brain, then yes. Yeah, I, I mean, it, it, it will be whatever the fundamental theory of consciousness is. We don't know that. Maybe you don't need that much of a body. Right. We don't know. Right. And we don't, but whatever it is, it can be duplicated eventually by technology uh, if, if, if materialism is 100% right. right. And if computational functionalism is true, it then you would need a, uh, it's much easier. Yeah. You would need a lot less <laughs> right. in order to create right. a conscious right. system. Right. But as I said before, it's a huge if. And uh, I think that generally speaking, especially in the science of consciousness, we should always remember those ifs and beware of making commitments that are not yet substantiated.